Hello friends, in today's video, we shall understand the concept of Linear Expenditure Systems. Linear Expenditure Systems or LES is a model used in economics to study how consumers spend their income across different categories or say bundles of goods. In simple words, LES is a mathematical way of estimating consumer demand, but instead of looking at every single product, it looks at groups of commodities. It was put forward by Richard Stone in his work Linear Expenditure Systems and Demand Analysis, an application to the pattern of British demand published in the Economic Journal in 1954. In LES, for example, we can group all food and beverages together, all clothing items together, or services like transport, rent, and entertainment together. When we add the expenditures incurred for all these groups, we get the total consumer expenditure. That is why LES is very useful in large-scale economic studies like household budget surveys as it helps to break down the overall consumption function into different meaningful categories. Richard Stone's original idea was to use linear expenditure system to connect household expenditure surveys with national income accounting. LES is built on the foundation of utility functions. Just like in indifference curve analysis, as we assume that consumers maximize their utility subject to a budget constraint from the consumption of two substitutable goods, in LES as well, we assume the same. However, with a minor difference that instead of individual goods, we take groups of goods and that these groups are non-substitutable. Although substitution can happen within each group, it means food as a category cannot be substituted with clothing category category but if we take food category alone rice can be substituted for wheat or clothing category alone if taken into account shirts can be substituted instead of jeans etc the utility function in les is additive meaning the total utility is simply the sum of the utilities of each group that is we can write total utility as the sum of utility from the category food from clothing from durables from household operations and from services etc Another important feature of linear expenditure system is that consumers always buy some minimum quantity from each group no matter what the prices are. These are called subsistence quantities because they represent the bare minimum required to survive. After meeting these minimum needs, the income that is left over called supernumerary income or discretionary income is then distributed across the different groups according to fixed budget shares. Although we should also keep in mind one limitation, that is, LES assumes that the marginal budget shares are constant. This means, as income increases, the share of additional income going into each category remains the same. But in real life, spending patterns can shift more flexibly. So, total income can be split into two parts, subsistence expenditure, which covers the minimum needs, and supernumerary expenditure, which is the additional expenses on the categories with the income left after minimum consumption. This is the essence of linear expenditure systems. Now let's connect this to something familiar for us Indians, Thalinomics. In India's economic survey of 2019-20, Thalinomics was introduced as a measure of how affordable a plate of food, that is a Thali is, for the average Indian. In linear expenditure system terms, we can think of at least one Thali per day as a subsistence food requirement. That's the minimum quantity that cannot be avoided. If a worker earns a certain daily wage, the cost of this one thali must first be covered. Only after that, the remaining income, that is a supernumerary income, can be spent on more food variety. Now what happens if say the prices of vegetables, pulses or spices rises or falls? If price rises, then the cost of the basic thali rises. This means the household will still buy the minimum quantity of food required, but a bigger share of their income will now be devoted into purchasing the subsistence. As a result, there is less supernumerary income left for food variety or better quality ingredients or even other categories like clothing, services or even savings. On the other hand, if prices fall, the cost of the thali reduces. The subsistence need is still the same, but now requires less money to meet it. This leaves the household with more supernumerary income, which can then be used to add variety to meals, improve nutrition, or even spend on non-food items. 
So linear expenditure systems provides a theoretical foundation for what thalinomics measures in practice. It shows us not only how affordable the minimum plate of food is, but also how changes in income or prices affect households' food consumption after covering the bare minimum. In short, linear expenditure systems explain the structure of household expenditure and thalinomics gives us a real-world snapshot of one of the most essential categories that is food. A simple linear expenditure system or say Stone's utility function is additive in the logarithms of the group utilities and is presented as u is equal to sigma n i is equal to 1 b i log multiplied by q i minus gamma i. In this function, gamma i is the minimum quantity purchased from group i, q i is the actual quantity purchased of group i, so q i minus gamma i will be the quantity purchased above the minimum quantity and b i is the marginal budget share. Each b i shows the proportion of supernumerary income spent on group i if the total income changes by one unit. Thus, sigma b i is equal to 1. Since the changes in expenditures must be equal to the change in income, by the budget constraint. It is assumed that the total income is spent. It is also assumed that the consumers are rational, the utilities are additive and the value of bi lies between 0 and 1. Also, it is assumed that gamma i is greater than or equal to 0 which means that there is no negative minimum quantity and then it is assumed that qi minus gamma i is greater than 0 which means some quantity above the minimum quantity is always purchased. Now, the equation can be expanded as u is equal to q1 minus gamma 1 the whole raised to b1 multiplied by q2 minus gamma 2 the whole raised to b2 etc. up to qn minus gamma n raised to bn. Here, using the rule for log of a product and the rule for log of a power, the above equation can be written as u is equal to b1 log q1 minus gamma 1 plus b2 log q2 minus gamma 2 etc. up to bn log qn minus gamma n. Thus, the maximization of LES utility function subject to the budget constraint can be written as u equals b1 log q1 minus gamma 1 plus b2 log q2 minus gamma 2 plus up to bn log qn minus gamma n subject to the budget constraint given as p1 q1 plus p2 q2 plus etc. up to pn qn is equal to y. And upon derivation using Lagrangian method, we get the LES demand function as PI QI is equal to gamma I PI plus BI multiplied by Y minus sigma PI gamma I. Let's take a look at the linear expenditure systems using a simple numerical example of the expenses in a single household. A household with two working members has a total monthly income for consumption of Rs 65,000. They buy groceries worth Rs 1,000 every week. So, assuming they buy four times a month, the monthly grocery bundle costs Rs 4,000. They purchase one to two pieces of clothing once every month. So, the clothing bundle cost Rs 2000. In terms of services such as rent, electricity bill, water bill, waste user fees, etc. All these monthly services considered as a single bundle costs Rs 15,000. So, the subsistence quantities consumed of each category in a month are one food bundle, one clothing unit and one service bundle. The marginal budget shares can be assumed as the marginal budget share for food is 0 0.45. For clothing, it is 0 0.20 and for services, it is 0.35. So that sigma bi is equal to 1. The LES demand function in expenditure form is given as pi qi is equal to pi gamma i plus bi multiplied by y minus sigma pi gamma i. Now computing subsistence expenditure, we get sigma pi gamma i is equal to pf multiplied by gamma f plus pc multiplied by gamma c plus ps multiplied by gamma s which is 21,000 rupees. So the household must spend rupees 21,000 each month to cover the minimum needs from all three groups. The supernumerary income that is the income left after the subsistence expenditure can be calculated as y minus sigma pi gamma i that is 65,000 minus 21,000 which is equal to 44,000 rupees. So 44,000 rupees is the amount available with the household to allocate across groups according to the marginal budget shares. So, of the 44,000 supernumerary income, 0.45 or 45% of the supernumerary income is devoted to consuming additional amount from food category. So, plugging in these values, 
we get 4000 multiplied by 1 plus 0.45 multiplied by 65000 minus 21000. That is 4000 subsistence expenditure plus 19800 which is the expenditure from supernumerary income which is equal to a total of 23800 which is a total expenditure made on food category for a month. Similarly, if we plug on the values for each of the category based on the marginal budget shares assumed, we get the total expenditure for each of the categories spent by the household in a month. And when the total expenditure on each category is checked and added, we get the final income as 65,000 rupees. Hence, the budget check shows that expenditure across various categories exactly equals the consumption income. Hence, it can be stated that the household with a total monthly income of rupees 65,000 spends 21,000 rupees per month for consuming subsistence quantities of food, clothing and services and the supernumerary income left is 44,000 rupees per month. Proportionate to the marginal budget shares assumed, the household spends 45% of the supernumerary income on food that is 19,800 rupees, 20% of the supernumerary income on clothing that is rupees 8,800 and 35% of the supernumerary income on services, that is Rs. 15,400. Now to make the example more realistic, let's add savings as a category to the same example and assume the marginal budget share for savings as B savings is equal to 0.75. In this case, the previous marginal budget shares of consumption must be adjusted to that of the marginal budget share of savings so that sigma BI is equal to 1. So, after the subsistence expenditure of rupees 21,000, 75% of the supernumerary income is saved, that is 0.75 multiplied by 44 thousand rupees which is 33,000 rupees that is saved and the remaining 25 percent that is 11,000 rupees is allocated additionally for consuming from each of the categories. The relative consumption proportions can be calculated as B dash F is equal to 0.45 multiplied by 0.25 which is 0.1125. B dash C is equal to 0.20 multiplied by 0.25 which is equal to 0.05 and B dash S is equal to 0.35 multiplied by 0.25 which is equal to 0.0875. Now adding up all the new budget shares along with the savings budget share we get it as sigma B i is equal to 1. So allocating the remaining 25 percent that is rupees 11 for additional consumption, we get 4000 multiplied by 1 plus 0.1125 multiplied by 65,000 minus 21,000. So we get 4000 spent for subsistence expenditure for food and 4950 for the expenditure from supernumerary income for the food category and hence we get a total expenditure on the food category as 8950 per month. Similarly, plugging in the new values of the marginal budget shares, we get the total expenditure on on clothing as 4200 per month and on services as 18850 per month and when we add all the total expenditures per month on these three categories we get the income as 65000 rupees hence the budget check shows that the money spent across groups exactly equals the consumption income hence it can be stated that the household with a total monthly income of rupees 65000 spends 21000 rupees per month for consuming subsistence quantities of food clothing and services and the supernumerary income left is 44,000 rupees per month out of which 75 percent that is 33,000 rupees is a savings share and allocates the remaining 25 percent that is rupees 11,000 on food, clothing and utility services. Now, in the original work of Richard Stone in 1954, the idea of LES was to understand not just the consumption behavior of one household, but to model consumption at the national level. So, we can use the same logic in the example to explain the aggregate consumption behavior of an entire population. Another point is about estimation. In theory, we say parameters like the marginal budget shares BI as given or assumed. But in practice, these values are estimated from household survey data used Using econometric methods such as regression. So, I hope you have got a clear picture of the concept of linear expenditure systems. If you like the video, do subscribe to my channel and share the videos with your friends. Thank you.